In this video, you will learn how to show timer cards on Zoom for online meetings, but especially for hybrid meetings, which have some unique challenges. I'm going to cover five different methods from worst to best. And we're going to start with the virtual background, which is in fact the worst method for showing timer cards. My name is Marcus Seppala. I am a hybrid meeting expert. That's why I wear the t-shirt. You can buy yours with the links in the description below the video. There you can also pick up my free hybrid meeting checklist. There are many reasons why I do not recommend using virtual backgrounds in your Zoom meeting. Even in a normal online meeting, usually a virtual background looks like garbage if you don't have a green screen. If you are performing the timekeeper role and changing virtual backgrounds, the Zoom interface is actually going to cover the meeting so you don't see the other meeting participants. But in a hybrid meeting, virtual backgrounds are even worse. Typically, you would have a main camera in the room connected to a laptop, and that main camera is pointed at the speaker. If I now activate a virtual background, it's going to appear behind the speaker. It's not going to appear behind me because I'm not on camera. And that is going to ruin the experience for the viewers. One alternative could be to log in with a second device like a phone and activate a virtual background there. It can work on some phone models. The virtual background does work, but in my experience, it is not consistent. The fourth best method for showing timer cards is to use physical cards. Whether you're participating in person or online, you could hold up a physical timer card to the camera. It could be the official timer cards from Toastmasters International, or you could use a custom set of cards like this. But in a hybrid meeting, you have an extra challenge. You cannot hold up these timer cards to the main camera that's pointed at the speaker because that's going to cover up the speaker. So instead, you have to hold them up to a second camera in the room. One challenge here is to make sure that it is close enough to that second camera that the people can see it, even if they're using gallery view in Zoom. A second challenge is that the colors may not always appear the same way to all the participants. A third challenge can be that if the timekeeper does not have the official timer cards or something similar, it may be difficult for them to find objects that have three distinct colors. I think we need more powerful tools to show timer cards, especially in hybrid meetings. And the tool we're going to use for the next three items is OBS Studio. It is a free and open source video conferencing software. You can download it with the link below the video. Let's jump over to Zoom and I'm going to show you the third best method, which is using a pre-recorded timing video. Here we are inside of Zoom. When the speaker starts their presentation, there is no timing card shown. But as soon as they reach the green time, the timing card is going to appear here on the left hand side of the screen. On the right hand side of the screen is the speaker. And since we are in a hybrid meeting, it is important that we can keep the speaker on the screen at the same time as we're showing any visuals. In this case, it's the timing card. And what you're actually seeing on the left hand side is a video. This is something that I made specifically for table topics. So after 30 seconds, it will automatically switch from green to amber. And in another 30 seconds, it's going to switch automatically to red. So this will give us a nice way of showing the timing cards to the people who are participating online, even if I, as the timer, am in the room. So I could be sitting at my laptop, but the person speaking is somebody else who is actually being timed by me as the timekeeper. Then we get the red card and you can see that once I start the video, I actually don't have to do anything. So this is a pretty powerful way to set up a timing. The way this works is using the OBS virtual camera. If I go into my zoom settings here, you can see that I have selected the OBS virtual camera and then I can use my keyboard commands to switch to another scene that has that video. Let's jump into OBS and I will show you how to do it in there. Here we are inside of OBS Studio. And the idea here is that you create this scene inside of OBS Studio 
and then you click on this button right here, the start virtual camera. And as soon as you do, everything that I've created in here is going to be fed through to Zoom. This scene is fairly easy to create, so we're going to do it from scratch right now. I'm going to start by creating a new scene collection. I'm going to go up to scene collection up here and then click on new. And this is going to be called the uh, timer video demo. Let's start by adding my camera. I'm going to click on the plus button down here under sources. And then I'm going to click on video capture device. My camera is called the Canon M50. So I'm going to click on OK there. And now I will get a list of all the cameras that I have in my system. The EOS webcam utility is already selected here. So all I have to do is click OK. Now the camera appears on my screen. I can press Control F, that is Control Foxtrot, for making my camera full screen. The last thing I want to do is lock that camera so that I don't accidentally move it. So this is the first scene where there's no timing card visible. Let's add the second scene where we're including the video. I'm going to click on the plus button down here next to scenes. And this is going to be the table topics timer. So I'm going to call it TT. In this table topics timer, I want to include the camera again. So I'm going to click on plus down here, then on video capture device. I've already added it to the scene collection, so I have to select it there and I'm going to make it full screen as well. But I want to have it a little bit to the right here, so I'm just going to grab it and move it to the right hand side right there and lock it in place. The next thing I want to do is add that video. In the sources section, I'm going to click on plus and then I'm going to add a VLC media source. And I'm going to call this table topics video and click OK there. In this dialog box, I can choose where I want to pick up my file. So I'm going to go to this playlist section here, click on plus and add file. This is the location where I have saved my Table Topics timer video. So I'm going to click on it right there and then click on open. One important button to uncheck here is this loop playlist because I only want it to play once. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to click on OK right here. And now we have added the video to our scene. I'm going to lock that in place as well so that I don't accidentally move it around. And if you look under my image here at that little timeline, you can see that the video is already playing. There is a 30 second green segment in the video. Afterwards, it's going to switch into a 30 second amber segment. And after that, it's going to be red. In this video that I created, the red segment is actually 1 minute 30 seconds. So that if the speaker goes over time, the red will stay on. Here you can see the details of the video in my video editor. You can see that I have this green segment, an amber segment, and then three of these red segments. Now we're back in OBS. And when the speaker reaches the green timing, all I have to do is click on this scene right here, and it will switch to the scene, and it will automatically play the video as well. This approach with using a video is a good approach, but it does have some limitations. Firstly, it requires preparation and it requires you to create that video file in advance. The fact that the video advances the cards automatically is certainly an advantage, but it can also be a drawback. In my experience, it was very easy for me to forget to actually note down the time because the video is advancing by itself. So I could kind of zone out a little bit while I was the timer. Another aspect to note, if you're going to use a video based approach like this, is to not use the screen sharing functionality in your video conferencing software. Because if you do, then it's going to cover up the whole screen. It is important that it only covers up a portion of the screen like we can do in OBS. Hit like if you're getting value from the video. The second best way to do timer cards in OBS Studio is to build them up as individual scenes. Here I can navigate down to the green, the amber and the red all within OBS Studio. Building up this scene takes a little bit more 
time, but I have a recording of a live stream that I did a few months ago where I walk you through exactly how to build up everything that you see here. It even comes with this word of the day display that you can toggle on and off and you can update it during the meeting. So check out the link in the description below or click the video here above me. One reason why I like this approach of building these scenes inside of OBS Studio is that it's very portable. I don't have to rely on any external files. I can just walk through these native scenes here inside of OBS Studio for my timing cards. This scene is also easy to export. All I have to do is go into Scene Collection and click on Export, and I can bring this with me to my laptop in my meeting room. And the file that is outputted is very small. You're not relying on a big video file for this approach. Because these scene collections are easy to export, I could actually make them available as a digital download for a few dollars. I could also include that timing video. Let me know in the comments if that is something that you would be interested in. If I do choose to go through with it, I will also add a pinned comment under the video with more information. But my favorite way of showing timer cards through OBS is to use the built-in slideshow functionality. This is number one on the list because it is so flexible. This is the timer setup that I use at my club. You can see here that if I go through the slides, I have green, amber, and red. But this is actually part of a bigger package where I welcome new members and guests to the club. I have some slides for thought of the day, and then I have my timer cards pack in there as well. In my full setup, I have a couple of extra choices. I can go through this setup that has the slide and the webcam. I have this view that has only the webcam, and then I can easily go back to my webcam and to this 50-50 view as well. This is obviously a slightly more complicated setup because it has these four different scenes. It has these moving transitions, keyboard shortcuts, and all of that. If you straight up want to copy my setup, go to marcuspresents.com slash OBS or use the link below the video. I use this setup for everything, including my live streams and my workshops. But here's a way that I also use it at my Toastmasters Club. I have these welcome slides that I show before the meeting starts, but also in the break. So here I've actually set up a call to action, follow us on Facebook. I have our meeting schedule right there, and I've even made this slide with the agenda. And this is actually highly valuable in a hybrid meeting, especially before it starts, because I can put this on screen. People can scan that QR code and go to our agenda, but at the same time, I'm keeping the camera on screen as well so that people can see what's happening in the room if they are joining us online only. OBS Studio is such a powerful tool. And if you want to learn more about how to use it for video conferencing, then click or tap the screen right there. That's my full playlist of OBS Studio tutorials. We are talking about how to share slides in different ways with the image slideshow or with PowerPoint. And there's also a guide on how to put up a countdown timer on Zoom using OBS Studio.